you don't waste any time. Um, I think what is it within 24 hours, you threw out the tweet and you called your shot. You're like, I want Mirab. What was it about? And what was that process like for you? That decision making process where you go from thinking about retiring in the cage for a split second to no, I'm not done and I want Mirab. Yeah, because I know I know the things that I could have done right. I know the adjustments that had to be made, and I and and there's a lot of things. It's, it's a complex, it's a complexity full of things. Even even the storyline of Marab being best friends with Algerman, I'm like, oh, I like that too, because I know I know that Sterling, I, I know that more likely Sterling's going to get past Sean O'Malley. And I think it just sets it up really really good with. Uh, you know, with me being not his friend, where he's supposed to relinquish the belt after he beat Sean, but uh, he's gonna have no other no other way to go but to fight me once again. Well, it it feels like we could be in a situation where if you know Sterling versus you know O'Malley, they're talking about maybe August Boston, but regardless of whenever that fight takes place, co-main event Henry Sahudo versus Marav Davalashvili makes a lot of sense, no? I like it. I like it. It was as personally, it's my idea. This is why when I did send the tweet, I'm just like, no, let's put us on the co-main event. I think I think the Bantamweight division, especially what's going on with obviously with the triple C and the trash talk and Aljamain and his his character, and obviously Sean O'Malley, and then now, you know, Marab, who, who's who's been able to, you know, and been willing to actually sell fights. I think it makes perfect sense. I don't think there's a better division right now in the UFC. Uh, that's better than 135 pounds. It's it's got theatrics. It's got a novella type of feel to it. It's got the best talent in the UFC. So I think it makes perfect sense. I hope Marab is is willing and able to be ready for August 19th. And as a matter of fact, August 19th when I when I won the Olympics, that's my most special day. So it'd be really hard to beat me. Wow. And uh, there's a there's a chip on my shoulder, Sandu. And uh, my training partner said the best one knows me very very well. He's like, man, he's like, man, people have no idea. People have no idea, man, that when this when this guy's determined and really uh and has something that's that's just tugging at him. So that's that's kind of where I fall in. Um, you know, it's it sat in. I take the defeat. Um, I take it like a man. But then again, and now it's now it's time to now it's time to climb up that mountain once again, and uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I can feel that energy just coming, resonating from you right now. Like this is not someone that's even contemplating retirement right now. I feel like you want to get back to work and uh, get a fight booked with Mirab ASAP and get back to business. 100%, 100%. I, I can't let this way. I can't, I just can't, man. If, if there's, if anything, the Algerman fight was a tune-up, was a tune-up for something bigger, even even with the loss, because I know, I know where, what is it that I have to do and, and how I don't want to feel that feeling once again, of feeling second place. And you feel Sterling can get past O'Malley fairly easily, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Sterling, Sterling doesn't have grappling. So if Sterling's able to kind of take, you know, put it on his feet, but no, I do believe Ultimate Sterling is going to press him, get him against the cage, and then, you know, if he's able to take me down, he can take any any of those guys down. So Sean's, uh, Sean's going to be in trouble. You know, Sean, Sean just relies on his striking. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure he works in the jiu-jitsu, but in, in MMA, it's just different. And I do believe that Sterling's going to get on top of him and just pretty much just hurt him. And the fight with Marab, would you prefer that to be a three-round fight or would you like a five-round fight with him? Um, I, I really don't care, man, whether it's a three or a five. Uh, I, I just like the storyline of us being in Boston or, uh, you know, under that. I, th- I like that better. But if, if, if they want to do five, they want to pay a little bit more, I'm up for that too. And I feel like for Marab, a- yeah, for Marab, this is easily the biggest fight available for him because he's choosing not to fight his teammate while he remains champion. So when you look at the lay of the land, who better than for him to fight than than Henry Cejudo? No. Yeah, yeah. If I was in his position, I would be grabbing that. I mean, you get a chance to you know to beat a legend, man, to be somebody who's a two division champ. You know, he he gets that opportunity, and. uh I think it's. I think he feels like it's a good fight, especially from what he saw with his friend. And uh, you know, I got. I got to hit a switch here. Here, I personally like the matchup too. Even with the Algerman, there are just certain things that I would adjust with the Algerman. Looking back at the fight, what is it that is that I could actually win? And that's bringing, that's being a competitor and really being able to steal the fight towards the ends of the rounds, like I typically plan to. You know, a lot of things that I did. 
wrong in that fight more than anything. And uh, I'm kicking myself in the arse. But like I said, I take full accountability. I take it like a man. I take it in the chin. And uh, now I'm after now I'm after his butt buddy. Running back close fights is nothing new in the UFC. We've seen Max Holloway and Volkanovski do it three times. We know what the stakes are. If you get this Marab fight and you defeat him, it's the perfect storyline. Like you said, you beat the best friend, you set up the rematch. If Sterling gets past O'Malley, boom, the stars align. It's, it's uh, everything set up there for a rematch. What are the stakes for you, though, if you can't get past Marab Dvalashvili? It's, it's not even that's not even entering my head now if i can't beat a dude like that yeah i mean it's i don't even want to think about, i don't even i don't even want to answer that because i don't even want to take it there the only thing i know is i don't want to feel that feeling again and uh i don't like feeling i don't like feeling second to nobody so that's a lot of the motivation sometimes not the the eagerness or the desire of winning but it's not feeling that not feeling that pain of losing so I just can't. I just can't take it there. Like, there's only one objective, and that's to take that dude out. Stylistically, break him down. How do you, this guy's got a gas tank? He's got incredible grappling. Where do you see some of the weaknesses, and and how do you think you can get it done against him? No, but I just think those are just all his strengths. You know, he's different than Sterling because he doesn't have the length of Sterling. He's got better cage work than Sterling. I will give him that. But. Now that I've been into it with his best friend, I, I know what is it that he's more like he's going to bring. He's going to bring a different stop with the same pressure, the same tactics. You know, so and that, that's more like where if I was him, I would probably take the fight. You know, I know what I got to do. Great angles. Now that I got my feet wet and after three years, I'm going to I'm going to be firing at all cylinders. He seems to be quite the character as well. Did you see him take Sean O'Malley's Michael Jackson thriller jacket and kind of get in between <laughs> those two guys? That was hilarious, no? Yeah, it's funny, man. Maraba, he's a good dude, man. He's a good dude. You, you can tell. Uh, uh, you know, he's been nothing but cool to me. Like he, he understands the, you know, the selling, the, you know, selling the fights. But he's also a killer, and uh, you know, I look forward to that killer because I know I'm a killer too, and I know what I'm capable of doing when. With my mind, body, and souls all into it, so you I know, can't, I, I don't, can't I don't even, I, I don't even want to talk. I don't even like talking, but I just know what, whatever it is that I have to do. I got, I got to get the job done. Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. Hey, do me a favor, hit the like button, drop a comment, let me know what you think, share this with your friends. And if you really enjoyed it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I have a lot more amazing content planned, so jump along for the ride.